Hi, Lisa Jones here from The Art of Living Happy. I'm so glad you've joined me today for the interview with the experts. Enjoy it! So today I am so excited to have Meadow Lynn with me, the co-author of her latest book, The Mystic Cookbook, which I have right here. And I actually made the blessing oatmeal this morning, which was so exciting because I have had the same breakfast every morning, which was with bananas and strawberries. And today I had it with apples and I had cinnamon and ginger and it was absolutely fabulous. So welcome Meadow. I'm so glad to have you here today. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's such a joy to be here. Oh, well, thanks. I'm just so excited that you had a few minutes of your busy schedule to spend some time with me to tell my my viewers and my readers all about this great new cookbook. I am so blown away by everything that you put into this. It's just it's not only a cookbook, which is a, it's a fabulous cookbook, but there's so much information about uh, enhancing your life with spirituality and blessing your food and feng shui and, and everything. How did you come up with the idea of mixing it all together? Oh my goodness. I think it's been many years in the, in the birthing process, if you will, that I've co-wrote it, as you know, with my mom. And so it's a blending of her background in spirituality and her 40 year career in mind, body, spirit with my passion and love for food and cooking. I cooked my first dish, I think, when I was three. I wasn't oh, wow. tall enough to get into the cupboards. So I, I have this memory of dragging the chair from the dining room into the kitchen and crawling up onto the chair, <laughs> stretch up and reach into the cupboards and pull out. I think I took peanut butter and tahini, some cocoa powder, a little bit of honey, and mixed it all together. We, we had pretty healthy ingredients in our I was going to say, those weren't the t ingredients I had. I think I had space food sticks or something, you know? <laughs> I mixed it all together and I rolled it into little balls and then I rolled it in coconut. And I remember putting it on a little plate and walking around kind of cocktail party style and passing it out to my parents. So I recreated the recipe last year. It doesn't have a great name, tahini balls, but <laughs> very descriptive. And they're actually quite delicious. So who knew I was on to something? It Absolutely. It sounds like you were some great chef reincarnated or something and that you just, you know, had that passion to express your, your interest in cooking from a very young age. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so tell me, what is your favorite part of the book? There's so much in there. I mean, is there a particular area or, you know, obviously it must be the cooking part, but are there some recipes <laughs> that you like the most or... Oh what? my goodness, it's, it's, the book feels like my baby. It's like asking a mother, which, <laughs> which child do you like? <laughs> oh, I don't want to do that, obviously. It's all. I feel like my favorite part is whatever part I'm reading or working on in that moment. But I love the fact that we were able to blend so many different modalities, as well as so many of my passions. I, ended up t I took most of the photographs in the, the book. Oh, wow, so th yeah, there's there's so many you. photographs are gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm able to blend in my passion for photography and share that. And then the recipes, of course, these are recipes that have, they're tried and true. I've been cooking at my mom's retreat since I was 18 years old. So a number of these are recipes that I've been cooking over many well, I don't want to say decades, but I guess it is probably decades. And um, so it's wonderful to be able to share that beyond the um, the select few who are guests at our ranch. And then, of course, the, the information that we share about living deliciously. As you said, it's not really a cookbook in the traditional sense of the word, even though there are a number of recipes. It's, in a lot of ways, a cookbook for your life. And I love that we were able to share the things that we've learned on ways that you can improve and enhance your life, not through suffering, but through joy and good meals. That is awesome. I love it. A cookbook for your life. And I have to say, one of the um, parts I was reading about that really struck home was about blessing your food and how you can really bring so much energy and, and just connection and and it's and it, I mean it just really it touched me when you talked about not only blessing the food itself but the farmer who raised it, the person who brought it from the farm stand to the next place of production, and the people that produced it, and then actually to your supermarket. And it just really suddenly the whole idea <laughs> of a meal became a mini village, if you'll you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I love just, the mini village. That's a great way to. To put it, yeah. and it is true. We talk about like I mean, you're in Connecticut now, in middle of winter, right? Like you take wet snow, 
and you roll it to make a, a snowman. You know, you right. start with a little snowball, and it keeps picking up more and more snow until it gets bigger and bigger. We talk in the Mystic Cookbook about energy being that way. Your food starts as this little seed, but each of those people, the ones who plant it, the ones right. who harvest it at the market, who cook it, you know, bring it to your table, all of those factors, it's like that snowball gathering more and more energy. And I love that metaphor. And then also on a more physical level, I think that the importance of just being cognizant of our food. So often it just appears in front of us. Right. And we're not really aware of the fact that that was a living plant, a living animal, that lots of people were involved in that process. And when you spend that time thinking about the people, thinking about the plants, the animals, it deepens our connection to our food which enhances our experience of it on all levels, physical, spiritual, mental. And it's, I think that's very important. Or even taking a moment just to look. Like, right. I've thought of cauliflower as kind of a, eh, it's an okay vegetable. Right, you know? right. <laughs> Not that glamorous, right? <laughs> but, but I wouldn't, you know, run far to get a piece of cauliflower necessarily. Right, right. And even 30 seconds really looking at it. Mm-hmm stunning it, it is, is such a beautiful vegetable it's, it really it is a flower indeed and when you spend that time with any fruit vegetable grain whatever you're eating and really look at it that appreciation when you see how beautiful it is that nature presents us with these beautiful things and the more beauty you eat the more beauty you see absolutely the continue to eat beauty and see beauty and find it and see it in all parts of your life and I just love that when you spend that time really looking or touching. Absolutely. Your, you know, it's very, food is sensual in, in the sense that it, it affects us on all. On all levels. That's amazing. Well, that leads me, you also have a blog, right? Is it savortheday.com? Is that what it is? It is, yes. So tell me, what do you talk about on your blog? Well, it started as the idea of just savoring those moments. Mm-hmm. Yesterday I went out to let my chickens out. And they followed me around the garden. I felt like the Pied Piper. Like, <laughs> loved. And, you know, they probably were just hoping for something to eat. But <laughs> I at that moment, and maybe I was only outside for five minutes, but that feeling of connection, that they, that they really cared, who, that I was there. And so it started that way, my blog, kind of savoring those moments and like looking at the cauliflower and really taking them in. And those little moments can have that snowball effect into all aspects of our life. But in my blog, it's mo- I, I, use, I tell a little story about something that's happened in my life, often right. about love, <laughs> or love or finding it or some experience and tie it into kind of a greater experience I've had or lesson I've learned. And then I always mix in a recipe that's connected to that wow, story. Wow, what a great idea. Some wonderful recipes there. And it is you know, in some ways it's like, oh yeah, there's a recipe in our story about love. But also because we all eat mm-hmm. in the world has to eat and everybody throughout time has to eat. We're all connected through food and it's really a grounding force for all of us. And it's a connecting force too. So that food, it it's that kind of thread through all of our lives. And so I tell these stories about something that's happened in my life, but Food is a constant thread. And I, for me, it is especially so kind of the family joke that um, <laughs> one of my memories is connected to food. Uh, my life is chronicled through food. I might not remember an event until somebody says, well, what did you eat? <laughs> <laughs> and then you can recall every detail, right? Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Well, that's excellent. Well, And you know, my blog is The Art of Living Happy. So I always like to ask people, what makes you the happiest? Oh, goodness. Well, the easy answer would be food. (laughs) But I think it was much beyond that. For me, that sense of happiness, it starts with those little moments that that my morning tea, I spend a few minutes every morning with my, or maybe more than minutes, (laughs) some days, a couple of English breakfast. And just that time that's that morning ritual, that something I do every day that's a constant. I wake up in the morning excited for my tea. And it's just, you know, it's just a cup of tea. It's not a big thing, but just the the knowing that every day I will have a cup of tea 
and I get to sit there quietly and con- contemplate. Sometimes I drink it in front of my email. Sometimes, sometimes I'm racing to and fro and I'm just drinking it quickly as I go. But other times I just sit and spend that five, 10 minutes with it. And I think it, it does, it starts my day off in a good, good way. That's great. I know. I love my cup of tea in the morning too. And that's truly a, a really beautiful time just to take that, like you said, five minutes even, and just contemplate kind of what's, what's coming for the day. So I love that. That, that makes <laughs> me happy too. <laughs> well, Meadow, it was such a pleasure chatting with you today and I am just so thrilled and I absolutely love your book and I'm going to ask everyone out there to go and buy it because they will not be sorry for investing in this beautiful book that can really bring so much passion to their lives. So um, so check it out. And uh, again, thanks, Meadow. Great talking to you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye.